afternoon, good evening, and as always, everything in between. It is me, Graham, otherwise known as Jelly Junkie, for another Joypad of Me podcast. Hello. As always, I am joined by Connor, aka Jean. Hello. And returning to us is Gaz, aka Duff Junk. Hey. He's back after his stag do from hell drinking session. I'm still alive. Yeah, are you sober though? No. Good. That's, <laughs> that's what we like to hear. <laughs> I'm How's all right. everyone doing then? Uh, Good. I'm, kid. I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. Getting Good. much gaming done? Very little for me, but I'm sure we'll talk about that. Um, no, not not as much as I would really like. Uh, a bit of bit of audio editing, which mm-hmm. was a game and a half. Um, ah, I yes. think I might have got a gold trophy in that now, or probably end up bronze. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll talk about that a bit later <laughs> as well. Towards the end of the show, yeah, we got to yeah. Time. Well, in some good news, I found my Vita. Yay! It'd been missing oh, nice. since Extra Life. <laughs> I finally found it now. So oh, excellent! Down the back excellent. of the sofa. Um, almost down the back of the um cabinet upstairs where the PlayStation Three sitting. So at some point, it must have fallen down the back and just been hiding there. Tore the house apart multiple times. It's a lot. I literally, I dropped a disc down the back as I was moving the PS4 up there for for a night, and as I pulled it away, like, there's the Vita, fucking hell, it's there, great. So the screen wasn't smashed or anything, no, it was still all... In, still in perfect, Nick. I'd, I was, I had horrible visions that it had been eaten by the dog. Well, considering some of the places it's been, <laughs> I, th- I was impressed it's still in a house. <laughs> but I, the trouble is, it's turned up at the same time I was looking on the store thinking... Oh yeah, there's there's that XCOM for Vita. Ooh, ooh tempting now, but what's sixteen quid? <laughs> yeah, sixteen quid for a game that I've played multiple times, but then I could play it on the move. Now, that's tempting. So very tempting. Um, um, did did you make you should have made use of the ten percent discount? That, um, did did you guys receive an email with a ten percent discount code? Probably somewhere in the midst of a thousand emails. I think it's expired now. I think I managed to use mine the day before it expired. Wow, 10%. But that was quite handy. I haven't checked my email since two thousand eleven. <laughs> that would explain a lot of things, guys. That, would, that, would <laughs> well, that specific email. <laughs> <laughs> and we now know why guys doesn't answer for certain things. <laughs> oh no, I yeah. checked the one the one you guys have. <laughs> yeah, no, he says backtracking. <laughs> but yeah, I'm happy I found that now, so I'm going to start playing a bit more on that, I hope. But it's, it's just too easy to play to bring the PS4 around and do certain things. But and it'd be even easier now with the update, which we'll talk about. But yeah, um, well, we might as well jump into our, our first bit, which is um, what we've been playing. <laughs> For me, it's going to be really quick and simple. Pretty much the only game I've been playing is The Division. What a shock. I've been suckered well into it. Uh, <laughs> to the point where it, I had to really take a step back and look hard at what I was playing at, so I could do the review. Because my personal views and my critical views are two very different things. <laughs> Ooh. It's I, I love that game. It, it has everything I want. It, it's. I mean, as anyone that's been online lately sees, I, that's all I've been playing. I know. That's, <laughs> I've noticed whenever I see you online, it's like, oh, we'll do what, what Graham's playing. Oh, yeah, it's Division. The same thing I've played <laughs> since it came out at launch. I've not You've stopped. gone from playing nothing but Drive Club and Gems of War yep. to playing nothing but The Division I and Gems, Gems of War. For ages. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glued to it. If you see anything else on my PSN for a while, it's normally my, my two year old trying to hit the controller. But yeah, um, Division's really taken me uh, exactly what I want out of the game. Um, I've literally I busted through the storyline in less than a week. Um, I'm constantly in the dark zone. Good and bad results, as uh, I'll, I'll talk about. But yeah, I can't get enough of that game. Like, to the point where I'm pestering everyone else to get online or buy it or all sorts. Of, you, you need to be playing Division. 
Um, but yeah, that's apart from when I found the Vita, I played a little bit of um, Zen Pinball. I need to spend more time with that before. I'm, I'm nowhere near as well as I used to be, and I wasn't good beforehand. Uh, played a bit of the World War Hulk table because that's always my favourite. <laughs> Uh, that and uh, a little bit of Star- uh, Super Stardust Delta because I love that game but oh my god getting used to some of the the play- gameplay styles where the use the gyro on it to move that just feels so <laughs> alien to me at the moment oh is that the, the rolling one yeah that is the only trophy I don't have to 100% oh, that game it's, it's so it's irritating it's awkward although I must admit <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to get a bit of a a crash course quite literally in um, in using um tilting functions and handling gentle controls because I went and bought myself a um, a drone. <laughs> that takes some practice to fly properly. That's especially when you're trying to fly in the house. That that doesn't go down too well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um I'll, I'll probably get a pra- bit of practice on that then go back to Delta and see if I can finish that one off. Because <laughs> that that takes some very minute careful controls to get you to go where you want to go. It's it's tricky. Uh, but yeah, as I say, I'll, I'll give my review of Division after everyone's had a, a little chat. And um, that's pretty much all I've been playing. Cool. It's pretty cool. Do you want really that next sweet. <laughs> Go on, Gareth. Oh, all right, cool. Well, I've been playing The Division as well. Which I think mm. I've sunk 35 hours into it now. That all since it's come out. <laughs> Not as much, I don't think as much as Graham, no. <laughs> I think I've put close to 90 Already, oh, Jesus. Well, I only yeah, finished. Yeah, the, you you helped me finish the story yesterday, and I only hit the the level cap uh, today. So I'm ready to uh, start playing the end game content. But mm. I'll talk about that more when you do your review because we can probably cool. talk more about that. But the only the only other two games <clears> I've been playing is uh, I'm become quite obsessed with Street Fighter Five. Right, exactly I want to know about this yeah. because it's had a lot of controversy that basically you paid for a demo, you've paid full price for a demo, it hasn't got all the content in it, it's a bit stripped down, but it plays fantastically, so I've heard what, it what, what's your it. take on that? Uh, I don't care about story mode in fighting games, I don't care about challenge mode in fighting games, I don't care about any, but I care about one-on-one online fighting, and okay. from the get-go, done that perfectly. And cool. that's the main thing. I like playing rank the rank mode in fighting and getting better at it. Uh, I bought yeah. a Hori Four mini fight stick. Never owned a fight stick before. Waste of Bloody time. Bloody hell! I hate fight sticks. I can't use them properly. <laughs> so you bought one. So you bought one. I, I, Why I, did I you bought, buy one then. I don't know. It, it's absolutely awesome for stuff like Super Stardust. It actually <laughs> is better for like arcade shooters than it is for fighting. I, I can't do a Hadouken on a fight stick. Yeah, I can absolutely <laughs> smash them out on a joypad. <laughs> Oh wow, well, that's funny. But I only bought the I bought the mini fight stick, so it's only like thirty quid. I didn't go and spend like hundred and fifty quid on one. Like get one so, of the proper It's a ones. mini fight stick. What size then in comparison? Because obviously the well, full size ones are huge. It's pretty big. It's big. It, it's big. It's bigger than both muscle. my like palm spreads. If I put my hands together, I said that 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 doesn't help. I don't know how big your hands are. <laughs> Sorry, Con, I don't have a you can have, have my like, tape measure on that. You can have hands like shuffles. <laughs> uh, it's about 10 inches long. <laughs> and what it. about no. the fight stick? No. <laughs> Alright, it's not as big as like a normal fight stick. It's a bit smaller. But yeah, this, this conversation has just gone far. <laughs> Good. Good I'm not editing this one. <laughs> oh, thanks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I bought a fight stick, and that was a waste of time. But it is pretty fun for like a lot of other games. Like I was, I was pissing around playing Dead Nation with it the other day. It's actually oh, really fun for that. <laughs> Dead Nation would be fantastic with the fights. But it, it's really good go with arcade games. Rocket League and just pull it out and play. <laughs> <laughs> I want to try and play Rocket League on my Guitar Hero guitar. I think that'd be hilarious. <laughs> but um, to see that. yeah, go, right. Going back to Street Fighter Five. It, it's it's an upgraded Street Fighter 4. It looks really, really good. But they've sort of simplified the fight in a bit more. So it's not as complicated as it was before. So people who, like me, who were pretty good at fighting games, but obviously n- not good enough to get to that top level. So yeah. sort of yeah. in Street Fighter 4, I hit a wall where sort of I got up to, like, say, Silver League, didn't get to gold or platinum, and I just couldn't progress any further. Whereas now I'm sort of... I'm slowly, more slowly progressing. I'm sort of winning two or three fights and losing one. So it's sort of, the matchmaking's quite a lot better. 
Uh, the, the new characters are pretty interesting. They're quite good. I've changed characters now as well because I used to always just play as like Ryu and Ken, which are right, pretty okay. pretty standard, boring characters to play as. Well, I've started playing as uh, Chun Li or Nash, who's basically sort of the he's basically Guile, but I think he's Blanka before he turns into Blanka. I, don't, I get confused with the story. Anyway. <laughs> so they're sort of characters where you have to sort of hold the, the back direction to charge and then push forward to do a fireball rather than do yeah, like yeah. a quarter circle forward. And uh, I'm kind of getting quite good at using characters like that now. So. You, it's kind of, yeah, the way they've simplified it, it, it's making it easier to use the other characters rather than you just pick one character and stick to it. Mm, right. So I think as the game sort of progresses more and I play it more, I'll try using more of the other, like more complicated characters like Bison and Zangief. But yeah, it's really good. For one on one online fighting, it's perfect. But I mean, like, do you, I mean, I know you're not a big fan of story modes in fighting games, but do you feel like it's been a bit of a a cop out the fact that you've paid full price for something that should have had a story mode with it. It will be coming, but it's not there yet. So do you think they, maybe they should have done a, a two part launch, like you know, 30 quid for the storyline, 30 quid for the online side of it, or it kind of makes me think they should have done what they've done with Hitman of you pay Episodic. a start. Well, yeah, you pay a starting price. If you want to just play like the base edition, um, you pay 15 quid, and then you can heard, pay 45 quid for the full game. We've heard uh, people in the past, I mean, one of the big things was um, paying for DLC that's on the disc already. But you've you bought a, a full price game that's missing half of the game. But it is coming, but we haven't finished it yet. Or it's not ready I mean, yet. Yeah, the, the, so, yeah, the, the, the two main things that are missing is the like challenge mode which is like all fighting games have now it's like the trials mode where yeah. mm. each character has like 10 or 20 missions you have to put combos in and obviously completing them unlocks certain things and then the story mode it had a story mode at launch but each character you only had to do two or three fights and it's sort of like an introductory story mode i think the main yeah. story mode is going to drop in july which is quite well, was, well six, almost was it five months after launch which is a probably apparently a fully time. fledged story mode but then again, Street Fighter Four didn't really have a story mode. It was yeah, like an arcade mode with a bit, one and then not have it there for release, but claim it's part of the main story. I mean, it just feels like you. Bought... I can understand why that annoyed people, but I, for me, I, like, all right, it's, it's not, it's not a fantastic game. It, it's, it's, it's good for what it does. I mean, for couch fight, like me and my friend play it quite a lot together. Like play next to each other, it, it's great. It's yeah, brilliant. Yeah. And even online it works like that. I haven't had a problem with the online at all. I know there was problems with the uh, sort of lobbies and but I don't want to go in a lobby. I don't want to have to sit and wait my turn to fight the sort of winner stays on while watching the other people fight. It doesn't mm. interest me at all. A- as a sort of basic one on one fighting game, it it it's near enough perfect, in my opinion. But the rest of it, yeah, it is missing. No, it's it's not a ten out of ten game by any means. But I I really like it and I'm I, I don't mind I paid forty quid for it. Not, it's not it's definitely off. one of those ones that I'd be tempted to pick up when all of the stuff comes out and go and pick it up at, uh, for next to half. Oh yeah, when the inevitable Super Street Fighter Five comes out with all the DLC in a exactly. year's time. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's just it seems a very very odd way of doing it. It very. seems like doing episodic content, but kind of not well, not being transparent enough about that's exactly what you're doing. Let's pay full price up front, but you get the second half of the game five six months down the road. It, it's Oh, didn't that happen with the division and the legendary edition? Um, not division. Not, no. division, not division. The but destiny. Don't you slag off my favourite game? But yeah, <laughs> is, yeah. <laughs> On the bright side, though, it was nice to get a game out of the box that you actually, when I put it in, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I went in, I loaded it up, I clicked ranked match one and one, and a minute I was in a fight and it worked. It didn't lag. Or... <laughs> You didn't have to download a, a 12 gig patch before no, you could play then. No, I, had to, I think the day one patch was like 200 meg. It was nothing. Wow. Fair dues. Compared to Tony Hawk's 5, where when the first time I put that disc in, I had to <laughs> download a 14 gig patch. Yeah, so you're <laughs> and it still doesn't fucking work. <laughs> I, don't think that, I don't think there's that, that couldn't go low enough for me to, to buy, I think, unfortunately. That yeah. I have a horrible feeling that'll end up being a PS Plus game because no one else is going to buy it. I don't think it will do. I think oh, it will no. just get put in the bin. It's I think, be, I think we'll have an E.T. situation on our hands. It was a really good franchise. The first 
the half dozen were amazing games and they just went downhill. He's so bad. Honestly, yeah. he's awful. But anyway, the only other game we've been playing is uh, I picked up Hitman, but I only picked up the introduction pack. I think you picked up the whole season pass, didn't you, Connor? Ooh, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> have I spoiled? What have I spoiled? Spoilers? Don't yeah. read the agenda. Uh, yeah, I did. I have picked up the full thing. I was humming and airing about it. I, I quite liked what I played from the beta. I really liked the last one. I can't remember what the last Absolution. I thought it was a fantastic game. A lot of people slagged it off, but I, I liked the way they did that. So I'd been waiting for this, but I'd been umming and airing about it. I saw the £100 collector's edition with the lovely statue of, um, of Baldy Mc47 face and was like, oh yeah, 100 quid. There's no disc in the box. No, get lost. So I held off because it was going to be my birthday game. And I'm like, because it came out on my birthday, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. No, and didn't bother. Uh, and then they did, they were do, as I mentioned, they, there was a 10% discount. So I managed to pick up some cheap uh, PSN credit via CD keys. So 40, no, 50 quid's worth of credit for about 46 quid. So it was a four quid saving. And then I picked up Hitman, the full version, um, and Hitman Go for like 45 quid in total so that was quite a nice nice bargain so i think i'm gonna gonna jump on and do a bit of streaming so how is the opening chapter then as a as a starter so i played through the prologue which is yep. the i guess was that the stuff that was in the beta which is yeah sort of it's the, the training in, uh, mission on the yacht yeah it's a, it, so you basically you get picked up by somebody in a helicopter um, and then you get dropped into this secret training facility, and then there's two yeah. prologue missions. So there's one on a yacht, and another one that really looks like where you get Sokolov from in Metal Gear Solid Three, like sort of like <laughs> Russian military base. <laughs> oh, cool! Like it's almost sort of sp- like ridiculously close to it. Oh wow, that's you... my favorite level. That battle with the ocelots is my favorite ever level in a Metal Gear game. So yeah. I, 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 I really want to play this now (laughs) so even the fact like you can sort of go in there and like beat a soldier up and like steal their uniform or you can beat the general up and steal the general's uniform and everyone walks (laughs) around like salutes you in there it's it's really funny but it's only a training mission so it's sort of like you can still see all the like floodlights all set around and cameras and stuff set up which i thought was quite a cool idea for like the training missions as well that's what i really liked about the the yacht level was that you could see it was a yacht but there was no water there was like a fake background and i was just like oh these are all like agents and actors and no one can get killed uh that's a fantastic idea that's really clever that's Mm. kind of a nod to to the fact it's a video game whilst being real world in the idea that actually you probably would test your agent's ability rather than just sending him straight into a mission. Well, yeah. I was like, that's a clever idea. I like that. So, oh, I'm definitely wanting to, to play that now. Yeah. So that, so that was quite cool. So you do the yacht mission first and you have to do it specifically how they tell you the first time. So mm. they'll say, right, you have, this is the way we want you to do it. Then yeah, yeah. you do it again and you can yeah. do it any way you want to do it and there's sort of like a there's like a challenge menu which i think's linked to a trophy so sort yeah. of it has different challenges for you to do so like one will be like i'll oh, like shoot some sort i'll try not to spoil stuff so like shoot uh one of the lifeboats just for example and make it land on like the guy's head so you could basically do that without <laughs> even getting on the yacht you can go and just like knock one of the guards out and just wait for the guy to walk under a lifeboat and just like ping the wire so wow. the thing falls on his head and kills him but there's loads of other ones like I think there's like 30, I think it's 30 challenges on the first mission. Every, every, yeah, everything from dropping a lifeboat on his head to like drowning him in the toilet. It's like <laughs> the sort of like different ways uh, you can finish the mission. Uh, oh, excellent. So, and then the next mission, you can do what you want on that one. It's just they let you free in the base and there's sort of like loads of soldiers about. So you've got to sort of be a bit like Metal Gear Solid, kind of sneak through and like work out different routes and the guards have patrol routes. So you've got to try and sneak him in and some of the guards are different to the other ones so you have like sort of you got the hitman sense button i think that was the same yeah. Yeah, same in absolution wasn't it yeah it was yeah yeah so you can pick up and if a guard's got a white dot above their head they're sort of like oh, i don't know more intelligent than the other one so they yeah. if you get close enough they'll clock that you're not part of the team yeah yeah 
Whereas other guards will just walk past and they'll be like, or they'll be standing there like smoking a ciggy and just be like, oh, hey, how you going? And you'll be like, yeah, and you just walk past. But yeah, other yeah. ones will sort of be like, who's that shady looking bald guy with a barcode tattooed on his head over there? And sort of stroll up to you and then you're like, shit. And then you've got to really kill him and run away and hide. But yeah, I did one, one go on one mission where I just walked around and knocked every single person out with a wrench. <laughs> so everybody was unconscious on the whole level. Just to see if I could do it. Obviously Excellent. not on New York because there's too many people in there, but it was on the base level, yeah. It's one of the things that I've always liked about uh, Hitman is that in a similar way to Metal Gear is that you get given scenarios and you can approach them in so many different ways. Yeah. And sometimes you do something so random and you're just like, oh, wow, that's really smart. Like, obviously, knocking the lifeboat off and things like that. That's, oh, I, I really want to boot that up now and start playing. I'm not going to. I'm going to save it. I'm going to do a stream yeah. of it. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm certainly looking forward to that more than I was originally. My only concern is there's no platinum trophy for it, is there? No, and it's sort of done. I think sort of like the the second series of The Walking Dead was done, like the Telltale games. So you saw right. loads of trophies in the first chapter, and then each add-on just had a few, like mm. like a gold and a silver and a cup, like two bronzes or whatever. And it looks like it's going to be like that because with the starter pack, you get the first area, which is Paris. So yeah. it's, it's I've I've only done the first mission. I actually failed it. I haven't finished it yet because I've got quite right. frustrated because basically I got to sort of a checkpoint and I kept fucking it up, and, <laughs> I, and I couldn't be asked to restart it back from the very beginning of the mission again. So I will <sighs> have another crack at it. But I'd basically, I'd knackered my own level sort of thing. So, but um, yeah, so it's a fashion show in a mansion, and you've basically got to take out like. uh the main guy, I think, I don't know, he's like a drug baron, I think, but he also runs like a fashion firm. So right. obviously you can imagine there's a big party going on and everyone's doing coke off the tables and there's like a rave going on in the main room and there's like a ridiculous <laughs> buffet in the back and you're walking around, but there's like the guy who's sort of like the, the Ben Stiller out of Zoolander character. You can knock <laughs> him out and like nick his clothes and because he's bald, <laughs> you can pretend to be him and like just strut your stuff up on. Like oh, one of the challenges fantastic. is to walk down the catwalk and basically just shoot the guy in the face at the end of the catwalk and then run away. <laughs> Oh, that sounds serious. But I think, yeah, because the Paris mission, it's got loads more. But I'm not sure if that's the only mission and you just, like, have loads of different ways to finish it. I'm not really sure because I didn't finish the mission. I don't know if it unlocks right. another area. So at the moment, the only place I've seen is this, like, yeah, massive mansion in the sort of outside of Paris in the sort of countryside. But, yeah, it's pretty cool. I tried the making my own contract as well, which is sort of interesting, nice. but it's pretty half-assed, if I'm honest. So oh, really? all you can sort of do is tag people in a level. So you play a yeah. preset level and you tag a person or multiple people and then you can set preferences of how you want them to die. Right. So you sort of play the level how you want someone else to do it and then you sort of hit the copy button and then upload and then they have to basically mimic what you've done. You can't really place oh, wow. anything or do anything. I was thinking it's going to be quite cool. Like you could place sort of your own traps and stuff like that, but it's not really anything like that. So it's kind of more like you recreate the training level for another agent. So yeah. like the the pro, the prologue level where you basically have to go through in a certain routine, you create that within the main mission for someone else to go and have a go at. Is that right? Yeah, basically. You and and the thing is, like, I got the the trophy for like someone completing one of my levels by literally just tagging the first person I saw as the level started and shooting them in the head and getting back in the car, uploading the level, and someone did it, and I got the trophy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's so easily gamed then. I like that. But yeah, I, I didn't play around with it enough to see, if, but it just looks like, yeah, you sort of tag a person and then you can kill them any way you want. You set preferences at the beginning so you can say like no guns or no this or no that or no disguises or you have to kill them wearing this disguise or you basically mm. just set like the only way to accomplish the mission to be like you have to dress like a waiter and kill this guy with a pool cue. Right. Mm. And then that's sort of your contract. We have to kill four people with a pull cue, or you have to do the mission without being spotted, or it's yeah. That that that's, that seems the only thing you can do at the minute. Whether they make it better as the game goes on, I don't know. But yeah, and I think you can only make it on the first three missions at the minute, which is the Paris one and the two prologue missions. So. Right. Okay. There may be more Paris missions. You'll be... I don't know yet. I haven't got that. Do you part, think you'll you'll buy the the uh, thirty quid upgrade and get the full game or? 
I do, I do quite like it. I might wait until it goes on sale. Because right. I mean, at the moment, the upgrade's thirty three ninety nine, and considering yeah. I've already paid twelve quid for the intro pack, which is basically you just paid yeah for the prologue and the Paris thing. So yeah. it obviously make it makes. I think it's forty four ninety nine separately yeah. in the store, and you could get the bundle with Hitman Go, can't you? Yeah. But I already had Hitman Go because I bought that. that I d- I didn't get it as a bundle. At least I don't, I didn't see a bundle. I just oh, was it not a bundle? Ah. Same, no, I bought them both at the same time. It's just because I had the the credit on, so I bought them both at the same time. Yeah, so I think it'll end up costing me what's that thirty four plus twelve. So it only costs a pound more if you yeah, get that way. But yeah. but if I was planning on doing that, I could have just bought the even though you don't get a disc. I should have just bought the like box copy because it was like thirty eight quid on Amazon or something. Really? I didn't think there was a box copy. Was there a standard box copy? I know there was the, the collects edition one. I didn't know there was a standard one. It might not have been a box in. copy. It might have been a download code. I don't it's know. It's probably, yeah, it's probably a download code. But I know you could buy it on, it was on Amazon. I think it was 38 quid, I think it was. Oh, wow. But yeah, no, it, it, it's interesting. It, it, it is good fun, but it's a sort of game. I don't, I don't know if I'd sit there and play. See, I, I liked what I played of Absolution, but I didn't, it didn't grab me, sort of. I, yeah. I got up, I can't even remember what mission I got up to. I think there was one in like a market square. It was like the third or the fourth mission. The one after when you're in the hospital. Oh, there's some better missions. Oh, go back to it if you get chance. There's there's some really, really good missions in that game. Really, really good missions. I've still got the HD trilogy and I've never played any of them. <laughs> I've got them as well. <laughs> Just I, I've, okay. I've played the originals, but I haven't been back and played the, the HD remakes. Yeah. But that's, yeah, apart from the division, which obviously I'll talk talk with Graham when he reviews it. Um, yeah, that's that's all I've been playing at the minute. Well, I I've only played one game. I've <laughs> literally all I've played I know that is <laughs> Assassin's yeah, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Well, I got it for Christmas. I'd mentioned in the last podcast that I'd started it. I wasn't very far into it, um, but I have now finished the story, and it was good. It was very, very good. Quite satisfying, quite clever. It feels like, to me, I loved Black Flag. I think Black Flag mm. was the best Assassin's Creed game that wasn't really an Assassin's Creed game. It was a pirate simulator <laughs> that they rebadged as an Assassin's Creed game. Brotherhood is actually my favourite Assassin's Creed game. Most people say Assassin's Creed 2. No. My love for Assassin's Creed 2 was destroyed by those freaking feathers. Um, <laughs> yeah. Bye. Brotherhood. Brotherhood's int- the best one. I agree with you on that. That's my favorite. Brotherhood introduced the multiplayer, which sadly Syndicate doesn't have, and I think it's really lacking for that. You are a big fan of that, weren't you? The- I, I've got a oh, man, it. yeah. And I, I'm determined to go back and play more of it in Black Flag. Um, on PS4 because I I rinsed it on PS3, uh, so it's missing that part. So for me, that's an automatic knocking some points off because I really liked it. The fact that it is it takes a lot of the evolution of Unity and tweaks the crap out of it, gets rid of all the crappy frame rate, and then brings back a lot of the aspects from Brotherhood that were first introduced. The ability to recruit people and use them as part of your team is back in, but you work as gangs, so you you take over areas, boroughs of London, um, and you recruit rooks to your team and you can send them in to, to cause distractions or to fight enemies and take out targets if you want it's really really good having those there it's not quite as involved as it was in brotherhood where you'd have to get your assassins train them up get them to a certain level before you could then deploy them and it doesn't have the same kind of yet yeah, attack them and they just go in and wipe everybody out it's a bit more kind of Rough and tumble. The combat's very Batman-y, as is a lot of the traversal stuff. Because you've got the uh, grappling hook, it basically means you can travel around everywhere quite quickly. It's it's a bit clunky, and it's a bit of a cheat in parts. You also have horses back, but this time the horse and carriages, and London is massive. And when you, realize, when you start bombing around and you're like, my God, this is taking me forever... It's so much quicker to just grab someone out of a horse and carriage, get in it, and just race around to your next target. Story's good. 
two twins, so you're playing as Evie or Jacob Fry, and you can hot switch between them whenever you want. So they're supposed to kind of be Evie's more stealthy, Jacob's more fisting, kind of. That sounded wrong. Uh, punching, <laughs> punching first, asking questions later type, and Evie's more kind of thinking about it and going in. You, 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 there are missions, story missions that you play as one or the other, but all the free exploring, all the extra side missions you can do as whoever you fancy. It reminds me a lot of, um, Infamous Second Son in the way that you have an area. In that area, you have certain missions you need to complete to play that area, but it doesn't feel like um, Second Son did, where it became very repetitive and dull. Because of the way that the world feels alive, you kind of go, oh, well, actually, I'm going to approach it this way, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that, and that works really well. I- I'm impressed by the fact that the... And disappointed that Unity could have been such a beautiful, beautiful game if it had been given an extra six months. Because Syndicate is smooth. It's really, really smooth. There's a lot of people on screen. I've not had any issues with people falling through, flaws. I've not had faces coming off or anything like that in Syndicate. The the free running is all nice. The the combat, as I said, is very Batman-y and isn't anywhere near as good. You've got that kind of idea of prompts over enemies' head to indicate when they're going to attack you, and you've got an ability to guard break, and you've got some very, very deadly combos, and you've got the ability to kind of chain kill lots of people at once. I've tweeted quite a few little bits from the fight clubs when I've been been playing those to kind of show off how brutal it is taking out lots of people at once. And they're very, very clever. They're really it looks very, very cinematic. I rewatched Kingsman and realised how much um, Syndicate has ripped Kingsman's fight scenes off. Really, like, <laughs> majorly, yeah. Especially like the brutal kills and stuff. They, this, there's a scene in Kingsman in the pub, and oh, Syndicate one. just the dev team must have seen that and go. We need to do that all the time in our game because it is like that. The, the whole fact you've got a walking cane that's, that you can use as a, a cane sword, so it's got like a double used weapon is, is really good. The weapon's really nice. I think the customization, they've gone back from what they did with Unity where you could customize your hoods and customize all your different bits and bobs of your outfits to basically you have an outfit and you have a choice of three weapons you can take with you. Mm-hmm. So you have a, a pistol, you have knuckle dusters or a knife. And that's it. And it, the, the extras you get, like the ability to kind of fire poison darts off their back. Um, it's lovely. It's really, really good. I'm enjoying it so much. I am tempted to buy the DLC. Uh, which so I well, did. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm really tempted. Uh, which I, I wasn't tempted with, with Unity, partly because there bloody wasn't any. Um, the DLC that did come was free because they it screwed up. the pooch on that game. Um, so I'm, I've got my love back for, for Assassin's Creed. They've got rid of the stupid bloody lock picking. The, mm. the thing that drove me potty in Unity of a trophy having to open up every damn bloody chest in the game requiring you to lock pick a door. To then lock pick another door, to then lock pick a chest, which required you to do a mini game each time is gone. You once you've got the skill to lock pick, you hold the button over the thing you want to pick, and it's picked. Yes, nice. there are still a million and one collectibles, of which most of them I managed to get through natural progression. Um, there are one set of collectibles I've got to get that are very tricky. They're basically Secrets of London and you get a picture that shows you a location, a riddle, and you've got to go and find a music box. And I don't know London well enough, let alone Victorian London well enough, (laughs) to understand what half of this stuff means. So some of them I found by luck. Most of them I'm just going, that kind of looks like that church over there. Uh, Maybe let's head to that church. So I may end up cheating and sticking YouTube on and, and going around and, and finding all of those. Otherwise, it's going to be exceptionally time-consuming. But I would highly recommend it. If you've 
been put off by the pirate nature of Black Flag, or you didn't get on with Unity, give this a go. I think it could have done with actually having the co-op mode and the ability to do missions together as either Evie or Jacob. I think that could have been the the ultimate point. Because that work, when it worked in Unity, it worked really well where you could have four people go off and do a specific mission. When it worked, it was it was a lot of fun. And I think had they done it so that you could just play with a friend... I think they could have added a lot more to the experience. Do you think maybe that was an initial idea? The fact they had two characters and they they sort of backed off from that because of how Unity was? I I think you're probably bang on. I think, yeah, I think that's that's what's kind of happened. I don't think the infrastructure was there it, properly It just seems strange it. to have two main characters and only single player when you, you could have had yeah. drop-in, you could have co-op, drop-in, drop-out, co-op. Yeah. You, could have, you could have done all sorts with it, but they, it seems like it's a big hole that should have been filled. It really is. It really is. And it would have added a lot to to the replay value because you would have been able to approach situations differently and work together. I think the main issue I've got with that is that as much as they're supposed to be two different characters, they basically play the same. They basically are the same character, just reskinned, and the packs and everything that you get are supposed to kind of take them down a different route. They both feel the same when you play and fight with them and and take on areas. Both of them can climb. Both of them can can lean against things and sneak and properly sneak. Now you actually have a stealth button, so you can kind of go into stealth, which is kind of spoiled by everyone going, "Wonder what he's sneaking about." Oh, it's that's like, yeah, that's <laughs> subtle. But that I've, works, I don't doesn't I've it? Ever sn- sneaked about in the Assassin's Creed game? Well, the, it's, it's because you didn't really have the option. You didn't have the the proper option to to sneak, whereas you do now. It's way more fun to walk into the middle of the fucking room and go, "Yep, there's ten of you. There's one of me. This still isn't a fair fight," and just blast a lot of them. That's I that's happened a lot for that me. Shit. Uh, that, just... That's happened a lot for me, uh, and he's still very very enjoyable. Where, especially now with the way that the combat works, is Brotherhood had a really good combat system of being able to like parry multiple people yeah. and using the sword and turn round and counter one person and then run your sword through the person who's coming at you and then go back and take the guy out behind you, you and then feel- defend against another guy coming. That but done as as fisticuffs basically, and it works well. It isn't on point in comparison to Batman. It just it just worked so well because it, it was like the, the fucking Batman films. You just jump into the middle of a, a group and just take yeah, them all on. And yeah. You just felt like yeah. you know you're so much better. You can take on five, ten people. Yeah, they can get the, the, the hit in it. It's not guaranteed you're going to win, but man, you felt like you could take them on. Uh, it's just love you, that shit. Like just jump in from high above and just go, "Yep, yeah, you're all fucked." You do you do definitely feel like that until you go into an area where they are definitely more powerful than you are and someone walks up to you, one it punches you and you're yeah. gone. And you're like, uh, what? Another feeling. I'll um, explain. Yeah, we've, I've, I've had recent What's experiences of that. So that's why I spent my time just bombing around, clearing all the burrows, clearing all the missions and kind of getting myself ranked up. I did about three quarters of the story, then I cleared everything other than collectibles and a few other trophies, and then went and finished the story being as powerful as I could be and kind of looking as sharp as I could as well. Um, <laughs> I would highly recommend it, especially, I think it's cheap at the moment. Uh, I got it for Christmas, but I'm sure you can pick it up for under 20 quid, and you're going to yeah, get a good 50-odd hours out of it. I just wish they'd had the multiplayer. I would pay... 20 quid for them to pop the multiplayer back in. Black Flag's multiplayer set in London, using some of their areas, I would pay 20 yeah. quid. In it a half. It was good week. fun. It was a different type of multiplayer than yeah. most of them out there. I think you and me had a good laugh playing a few. Yeah, I, I, I loved the multiplayer and I was so disappointed it disappeared in Unity and more disappointed it's not been brought back for Syndicate. Um, I'm hoping at some point it will come back because it's, it's my favourite multiplayer, um, followed by probably, uh, Last of Us and MGO. So, yeah, I, I, I think we'd like that back, please. Or I would. <laughs> uh, but yeah, go play it. It's, it's really good. Definitely well worth doing. 
Really, really good. Enjoyable story. It's a bit, a bit hammy in parts. It's a bit silly in parts, but it's good. I like the, the kind of sibling squabbles you get between them. I love the fact that there's nods back to, to previous Assassin's Creed games. It's a big reference back to, to Edward and, and Edward Kenway and Black Flag. Um, that's, that's really kind of quite striking within it. And it's good. Really, really well worth doing. Get it played. Cool. And I, I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think I'm about to start then, I suppose. Um, if that's all we've been playing, then yep. I'd better dig into my review of The Division. Right, where the hell do I start with this? Um, right, I'll, st- I'll, st- I'll start off with being the critical side. It's the, la- the latest Ubisoft title. I mean, following on, I mean, after Assassin's Creed Syndicate, they've, they've pulled out a few stuff. Um, was it Far Cry Rivals? Primal. Not right, Primal, that's Primal. it, yeah. Which it, that seemed to come out with a bit of a damp squid almost. Division they put a shed load of promotion into. I mean, there's a half hour video on um, Amazon Prime at the moment. There, there's promotions all over TV. They they really went big on this. this to be fair, of... they kind of had to. They've been trailing it for nearly three years. Yeah, and I think it's paid off. Ubisoft had a a slightly dodgy name when it came to games coming out that weren't broken, because most of theirs have issues. This has issues, which I'll get into in a minute, but the gameplay is solid. I mean, properly solid for me. Storyline basically states, um, comes out without spoiling anything, someone has managed to infect many, many people of uh, Manhattan, uh, with a deadly virus, I think it's called the Green Virus or the Dollar Virus. Yeah, because they managed to infect um, a number of notes during Black, Black Friday, Friday, and it wiped out a shed load of people <laughs> in 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 New York to the point where part of New York, well, New York was closed off, and the inner part of New York was really closed off because they couldn't keep control of it, and that became the Dark Zone. So. That's when a bunch of people got um, called up, like ex-military types or a hidden division of people. See, I thought that... they were more like a, um, sorry to interrupt, they were sort of like a super secret special forces like TA that no one knew who they were. Yeah. Sort of thing. Nah, I mean, it's, the... It's, the, it's the American equivalent of Dad's Army. Basically, well, yeah. th- th- This Dad's Army can, can actually do a little bit more than um, be scared of sticking a pole up their asses. Like, this, this, they're harder fucking nails in this mm-hmm. although as the the preview shows it didn't quite go to plan for some of them and so you're now in there you've got to clean up the mess and find out who and why they caused the the virus and see what you can do about it so that's all i can really give about the storyline without any spoilers um what i will say is the story for me was strong the ending wasn't as strong as I was expecting. I mean, there will be more to it. I got more out of their echoes. Uh, they do something a bit like... Um, it's a cross between Eagle Vision in Assassin's Creed and like the Grimoire cards in Division uh, Destiny. Yeah, it's in the game! Oh! <laughs> Story in a game? No yeah, way! It, it, You'd have to download an app. But you don't have to listen to it. I mean, you, you you activate these echoes, but you can run off straight afterwards where you collect them, but it's actually worth taking some time because they bring out a much bigger story that's, yes. that's played out because you will hear certain names in a narrative and then you'll find out what's happened to that person in one of the echoes or it'll add more to that storyline, to that, that depth of it. In a similar way that the um, audio tips did in uh, Bioshock that type of thing where yeah. you find them and it, it'll add more into the story you don't have to find them but if you want to know more of for, what's for going me, on I, mean, I, I considering I, I, I busted through it I took up quite a bit of time and checked out a load of these these echoes because I was I, I wanted more of this story that for some reason this appealed to me and it, it, it hooked me in and yeah they, they, it's nice to see and it's detailed as hell they have gone to great length. There's wanted posters up. There's missing posters and actual full names, descriptions, and the actual environment. And it's a huge open world. It's it's fully detailed. It's not just the standard 
set of pixels here, there, everywhere shown. It's there's nice. Everything looks run down and damaged and distraught, and there's in, uh, infected bags and bodies lying around the floor and cars that are just abandoned everywhere. But it, it doesn't. It's not repeating itself over and over. It actually looks like a fully developed Manhattan. I mean, the you can go to Times Square, you can go see the Statue of Liberty, and like it. It's it's New York. I, I, I took some time going around. I, I enjoy the environment. I enjoy how they've done it. There's random people walking around arguing with each other or trying to find bits and pieces. You run into looters and rioters and this group called the Cleaners, which are basically a, seem to be a government agent that just goes in and burns everything. They're just trying to get rid of everything. And they're, they're mean bastards because those flamethrowers are vicious. How satisfying is it, though, shooting one of the tanks on oh, their back? Yeah, you can literally you can stand off from a distance and you can pot shot one of their gas tanks and it'll just leak and then explode like a grenade. Yay! <laughs> and take everyone out in his vicinity. It's, nice. so, it's so satisfying because you, literally you can... It's a third-person game. It doesn't feel like you should be able to target people that accurately, but you really can. And your choice of weapon makes a big difference in it. And we'll get into the weapons... If you thought Destiny had a lot of customization, this is insane. This has so much in it. You start off with a basic set of gear. Um, what is it? Like gloves, knee pads, body armor, um, weapons, and things like that. But as you go along, you pick up new stuff. And by completing certain things, you get given new stuff. And on top of that, you can craft new stuff. Now, each thing has um, different parts like um, a defensive value or um, damage per minute so you go along and you've, you've got standard gear you've got um, specialist gear uh, high-end gear there's, there's gray green blue purple and yellowy gold stuff now you can pick up higher gear but it might not be as good as later on lower gear so you have this constant balance of checking your gear Checking what weapon you prefer, shotguns, machine guns, assault rifles, pistols, marksman rifles. You can tailor your character, your avatar, exactly how you want to play the game. I mean, um, Gaz is a, is a firm believer in the shotgun approach. Whereas for me, I quite like the marksman rifle. Sit off a little bit further, <clears throat> put pot shot a few people, then go in with the assault rifle and clean up. Gaz is one for running in face first and just seeing if his shotgun can last longer than the enemy <laughs> drag him out a few times for that one um, but you do that and you tell you've got all your your, your armour your, your your body armour your bits and pieces on top of that you can pick up these mods which you can put onto your weapons and you can put onto your armour and your backpack can carry a certain amount of things but the better the backpack you can carry more but you might want to go less than that because it might have a certain perk that you want to keep um, certain pistols will have it if you can kill an enemy, you gain more primary weapon ammunition. That might be a better weapon than taking one that does more damage because this way you can carry more ammunition. So there's a constant RPG feel to this as you go along the game. Now that's... That, that for me, I love that stuff because you can then take so long in customising your character. You can go into the hub world bit where you can actually buy bits and pieces, but it might not be as good as what you pick up half an hour down the road. So you've got that constant balance. I've been one that spent a shitload of cash on getting what I wanted. Gaz hasn't spent a penny on it yet. Cause he's I have, I have now. I've got to level 30. Oh, you have now. You've you picked up the good shit now, have you? We, because, yeah, because now all the vendors sell level 30 gear. I can't get any <laughs> higher than level 30, so now I'll buy it all. Yeah, so I'll explain. The single player has a level cap of 30. Now, you can you pretty much race through up to, what, 16, 18 pretty quick. If you ignore the side missions, you can hit 30 just by pretty much doing the story yeah. missions by a level or two. You know? I mean, th th this is where I think it's had a little bit of a um, an issue because the actual main story missions, there aren't that many of them. I think, was it eight main main missions? Which take... No, I think it's more than that. It's about um, 12, I think. There's not that many, to be fair. But all the side missions, all the encounters, all that... That takes you hours if you want to get through all that stuff because that's where you can pick up extra gear. That's where you find out more about the story. I mean, some of them you've got to defend supply drops. Some of them you've got to rescue hostages. Some you've got to find missing people. You've got missing agents to find. All of that adds so much to the story and you get a real feel of 
what's going on. You, you almost start taking care of the city. You got as you're walking along, you have random people coming up asking for help, and you might have to give them a bottle of water or a med pack and things like that. And you almost feel bad if you've only got one med pack and you know you're going to go into a firefight. You might not want to give it to them, but you've got to help. You're there to help these people out, so you feel like you have to. And it's it's a game I wasn't expecting to bring me in that much, but it really did. And considering previous Ubisoft titles, none of them have really done that to us since Assassin's Creed Two. Really, I mean the, the Brotherhood and Revelations did as well, did really well. But even with Black Flag, I liked the game. I wasn't that invested in the character or how it how it went. Division has sucked me right in. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, take it taking the piss amounts. It shows how much I enjoyed the game. As I say, I've I've put ninety plus hours into it already. I've broken my rule of thumb. And I've already paid for the DLC, the season pass, sight unseen. And I never do that, especially after Destiny just burnt it for us. That's that. I'm already for that one. Um, I'll say it's got some issues. I mean, it, it was famously known day one, the whole queuing to activate your character was a farce. <laughs> you, you actually saw people queuing up in game 20, 30 deep, waiting to press on a laptop in game to activate your character because there, there was a glitch there I mean, to be fair there was thousands of people going on they didn't have the servers ready and it cocked up they should have been ready there was an easy workaround we put the youtube video up it was fine after a day or so there have been issues people can fall through the maps i mean gaz has noticed we've seen a couple of issues where gaz has fallen through the map completely or some people can just be up in the air for some strange reason it's an always online game. There are issues. It in this day and age, I must admit, there probably shouldn't be, but it is what it is. So yeah, I've got to knock a couple of marks down for it not being perfect because it's not. It's not a perfect game by any stretch, but it has so much of what you want out of a game. the The characters feel like they move right. The weapons feel right. That there's a there is a difference between firing a marksman rifle and an assault rifle the damage is different it's not a one hit kill for a lot of things you do it's it's got the rpg element where you take off damage so some enemies are literally bullet sponges i mean you can unload clips into them and it does very little but you hit, get the right weapon at the right level you can knock them out pretty quick so it you've got to think about what part of the map are you in sections of the map have different level caps so you can walk anywhere you want but it's advised maybe if you're a level 14, go don't go up into level 28 because tried that it really hurts. Yeah, you get one <laughs> shot by everybody. Yeah, there's a trophy for going to each of these safe houses <laughs> in each of the zones. I tried doing it almost 15 levels early, and I spent more time sneaking about in division than I did in any Assassin's Creed game because <laughs> I'm literally ducking behind a car as this patrol of. Soldiers go past them thinking, there's no way I can take these out. Please don't let them see me. Please don't let them see me. Because you do. That's you've quite cool. got to run. So you've, you've got to you can about... avoid combat if you don't want to yeah, do it. You, you can you sneak can. past if you, them. That's what's if, cool. if that's your way, if you're running low on ammunition or if you're, you found yourself in a, a zone you shouldn't be, you can get out of it. You can hide. You can find little alleyways and sneak in. There's quite a bit of verticality. You can get onto building roofs and go through buildings in some places. So the city... As much as it's a dying city, the city feels alive because there's so much in there to see, to do, and to work with. On top of that, you've got the dark zone. So that's where you get a PvE and a PvP side to it. So you enter the dark zone, and it's similar to the single player where you walk around, you take out enemies, but there are also other players there. Now you're all neutral at that point, so you can work together if you want or you can shoot other division agents if you want and go rogue <laughs> but that's where the game gets freaky because you, the idea is to pick up loot and extract it at one of the extraction points but anyone that's played it or seen it the extraction points end up being this huge Mexican standoff every time <laughs> you can set off an unless I'm here. playing unless Gaz is playing because then you just run for cover because Gaz is well just I just love everybody. 
stand there and everyone's pointing guns at each other because no one trusts anyone. Because as soon as you shoot someone, you then become rogue. Now, and appear on everybody's map who's close. Yeah, you then have a target and you get a bounty. You. But if you survive being rogue long enough, your XP goes up more, and you can you can loot other people's gear. So, say I shoot Gaz. Gaz drop. Gaz has picked up a load of good stuff. He's dropped all that. He's died. I can pick it up and extract it, and I gain the benefit. But, you've but then got I'm rogue right then. for the next thirty seconds or two minutes or whatever. So he can come. He'll find me on the map as soon as he comes back in, and I'm literally running because unless I can take him on or his group, you're screwed. And when you see rogues on map, you might only see one rogue icon, but there could be a team of four. <laughs> there are many yet? of them. Many of them walk around, and literally, there, there are groups that just go around being assholes. Basically, <laughs> they just want to. They just want to shoot everyone. Um, I've got a really good YouTube video where I was just betrayed by a bunch of randoms. <laughs> they invite me to their group. We go into the hardest level areas. We take on. We're there for like fifteen minutes, just working together. They, we help each other out. We're reviving everyone. I get so much good loot. I get gold, high end loot in my bag. I've got like four of those plus purples everywhere. And as we go to the extraction point, I clear out all the enemies with them. And all of a sudden, I see you've been kicked from their group, and they both turn on me and just floor me, like you <laughs> bastards. Just, just it, it was saying I trusted random people. On, online and I got my ass kicked for it but on the other hand a lot of random people especially people playing on their own want to gang up group up together and you can actually find good people to work with I found more good people than I have people trying to screw me over there which is surprising because I thought everyone like as Gaz says he just wants to go out and shoot people <laughs> so <laughs> the, the, the Dark Zone has that feel of it's a simple premise but you're constantly worried about walking up to people. And as you walk up, if you point your gun at them, they might point and fire back at you. You see someone pointing at you looking, you might shoot at them first. Your hair trigger could be your worst nightmare or your saviour there. So you, <laughs> you, it's, you don't know. And mates can turn on you. Enemies turn on you. You just haven't got a clue what's going to go on. It's really... It's got a lovely feel to it because it's unlike, say, the Call of Duty or things like that. This isn't just a simple run and gun. This is where you're thinking and you're wondering what everyone else is going to do. <laughs> and it's something that a lot of games haven't tried before. I think it's it's their calling card. It really works for Division. I just I love it. Every part of it, I love. It. I don't often put that much out, that many hours into a game like that. And so I complete the storyline quick enough. There are, as all Ubisoft titles are, there are a shitload of collectibles to pick up. It's a little annoying because your your map can fill up with so much crap on there. It, it does take a while to clear out. If you like that kind of thing, it's worth doing because a lot of the storyline comes from it. There's so much lore in it. For like a sort of modern day or near modern day shooter, the amount of lore in it is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm so sure it's going to be another a franchise game. I think that you'll, you'll see Division 2 or whatever they're going to call it in another year or so. There's a lot of scope to see it go elsewhere. I would I'd be say. very, very surprised if it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, there's fast this for selling them. new IP in ages, isn't it? I think. <laughs> yeah, I think this is this for them. They're putting a lot of money behind this. This is going to be their new Assassin's Creed, I think, for a while. I think they're going to really push this, and I think rightfully so. It, it's got a lot of elements of it. Like, you don't have to do all the bits and pieces. I mean, you can just find the most powerful gun and stick with that if you want. But you, you can also customise your character to be exactly what you want. You've got, um, as you unlock the the home base, you can choose which bits you unlock. There's uh, security wing, medical, and... Tech wing. Tech wing, yeah. And as you unlock certain bits, it... Sounds very you... Metal Gear. It Sounds a, very mother base. point, yeah. Um, it's also a bit like in Assassin's Creed when you remember when you had to build up your little village or your castle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's it the same vein as all that. But it gives you talents and perks. So you can have, you can put down a um, a first aid box, basically. It, it helps heal you and your teammates. Or you can throw a turret, which can kill damaged enemies or be used as a good distraction. Um, Hard Rock, a friend of ours from the site, he loves these sticky bombs, which basically roll along the floor, find enemies, and just blow them up. 
Yeah, they're like <laughs> spy, the spider mines, aren't they? Yeah, the, like more you, oh, cool. the, the more you throw. I, I watched him, I hadn't seen him before, when I was online with him, I saw him throw, and it looked like he threw fucking like eight or nine of these things on the floor, and they just went everywhere and cleared out a room. It was like, holy <laughs> shit, yeah. I won't ever go at that. It, there's, there's so much you can tweak. The, Destiny was good in the fact that you could change your weapons and your armour, but once you got what a certain amount of things, you didn't really bother changing too much, or you... This, for, still at the moment at least, it feels like there's a constant supply of new stuff. You could pick up three of the same weapon, and even at the same level, and they could still be a bit different. And then when you add perks to it, there's even more difference. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could add silencers or muzzle brakes or certain magazines will let you reload quicker or have more like ammunition. Double your ammo capacity. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've, I've got a, a machine gun. That, I think my M60 has a 100-round mag, but I've got a... Heavy duty mag that on it that gives it eighty four percent more ammunition, so I can literally just sit there and just melt a room. It, it, it's so good. Um, score wise, this is where I have to be critical to it. I have to take my love of it away and think right. It's got some issues. There are. I've seen a bit, a few pop ins. I've seen people fall through the floor. Um, Story wise. You do have to hunt around to get a lot more of the story than just the missions. So, I it's a solid eight for me. It, I'd agree with that. Okay. Yeah, I, I, that that sounds fair from what you've said. I'd that definitely to, sounds fair. For me personally, it's an eleven out of ten any day of the week. But if I had to <laughs> sell it to someone else on its pure merit, eight out of ten. Yeah, well, ten's still a good score for a game. I and by the so. sounds of it, there's there's a fair bit in there. It, to me, it sounds like it's what I wanted Destiny to be. Yes, it, yeah, massively. It, it's there's, got there's, a lot of similarities to Destiny, I think. It, like not in the, the actual like setting or anything like that, but like the way it plays, the like drop in, drop out multiplayer, the different grades of loot, even the color coding in the loot's exactly the same as it is in Destiny. <laughs> pretty much, Gareth, you've you've played like Last of Us multiplayer, haven't you? And you know, I really like that. I've kind of mentioned it. Mm. I loved the idea of of not having much stuff and you having to kind of work for it. Whereas the Last of Us multiplayer was very much just an area. This feels like it's an open world. I'll be honest, version it's, of that not, same thing. it's not anything like the Last of Us multiplayer. Is it not? Oh, no. Right. Okay. Not at all. I think Definitely. you'd really like this. It's the open world side of it is huge. And then when you, if you, you go into the dark zone, you can go in on your own. You can go in with a group. There's always something to do. There's always something, you, and it never gets old. It hasn't, hasn't got old for me yet. The fact you can walk in there, and every single player you come up against could be a friend, could be an enemy, could just be a, a five minute help for an extraction. It, you, you just never know. It's always new. I mean, I've, I've played with people. I've played with Gaz, and you know, one minute he's, he's being nice and friendly, next minute he'll fucking turn on you. <laughs> you I've never you, turned you, on you. you. You talk on the mic, and you hear, you know, I've just picked up this, that, and the other, and all of a sudden, but because you also have it's got local audio so you can actually hear people close to you yeah if you're oh, not cool. in a party like yeah. i was yeah when i was in the party chat with graham and justin yesterday but there was like because we're not the same level i got thrown into a different dark zone instance so like it's bracketed in your levels so obviously mm. you can't be a level 12 and end up fighting level 30s so i think i was level 28 so i couldn't get in the top bracket with you two so it put me in on my own and I can just hear this American guy talking to his friend going like, hey, uh, if I send this guy a request, do you think he'll join us? So they sent me like a group request, so I joined them and uh, like went through an area and they both had like not much health left, so I just popped both of them and nicked all their gear. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the trouble, you've got to be careful because if you're, if you're at an extraction point and you're talking to a mate and you're saying what you're about to extract, if you say too much, these guys might turn around and have a go at you because you might have yeah. something better than them. Oh, if you've got like really a gold smart. like light machine gun, which is probably my favourite weapon in the game, because you can just absolutely destroy people with them. <laughs> and then you go like, oh, I've just picked this gold, it's got this much DPS and it's got this mods and that mods on it. Someone will just turn around and just go bang, yeah. shotgun to the oh, back of the head and take reason. you out. <laughs> because the extraction is is by a helicopter, they drop a rope, so it takes you a few seconds to attach your... Yeah, 90 back. seconds, yeah, for it to come and, in, and then well, you've got to wait 30 to seconds in. to go off. But even the point where you're attaching your bag to the rope, it's like it... it it takes five, six, seven seconds to do. 
in that time, you can't do anything else. So someone can turn on you and you're, you're screwed. <laughs> You've got to hope and pray or be aware of what's around you. Well, my other favourite thing. feeling of just, it's open world, but it's tight, enclosed and atmospheric. And it, it works for me so well. The, when, the annoying when... thing with, with what you're saying about this is, and it's it's kind of a plus and a minus, is that I think this is going to be the first Ubisoft game that doesn't hit half price within six months. No, this I won't. think it's probably going to hold its price quite well, because people see do seem to be enjoying it, and it seems to be really good. It seems to be selling well, so I can't see it dropping and seeing second-hand copies I, I, popping up anytime I think up if you find soon. it for 30, 35 quid, you're doing all right. I think it's, it's worth that any day of the week. I, I, if it didn't have the day one activation glitch and there was less of the falling through the screen yeah i i would for me i'll I'll give it a nine and you know but i've I've got to drop it one because it's had its issues but as a as a fan of a good game this this hits every mark i mean to the point where i'm that sucked in not only have i bought the season pass sight unseen but as as connor and me have been talking I'm actually going to cosplay this. Uh, which <laughs> I've already bought the patches. I've got most of the gear <laughs> together ready. Um, yeah, it it suckered me right in. This this game is one. I say I bought it day one. It hasn't li- left me disk drive at all. <laughs> I don't think I've played anything else since this has come out. Because I, I can get on for half an hour and go in dark zone, or I can sit there for four, five, six hours at a time. It just yeah, it, it, there's enough there for me to keep going, and I, th- I think anyone that jumps in won't be disappointed. <laughs> so yeah, um, eight out of ten for review, um, ten out of ten for love for me. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Go and buy it and jump in the dark zone with us. <laughs> well, well I think we, I think when I've yeah, I think when I've finished off um, Syndicate and probably hitman it may well be the next on my pickup list because it feels that i mean the character moves around very much like an assassin's creed character so i think you'll you'll slip into it very easily uh it just has that it's it's easily recognizable as an ubisoft title that it really does have that assassin's creed feel to it but brought to the modern day modern weapons modern storyline it's like how how you know we've always been asking for a modern day Assassin's Creed. Mm. Okay, the Division agents aren't assassins, but they run by a different code from most other people. I mean, they, they, they've got no um, issues shooting some rioter or looter. They'll, they'll quite happily sort people out when needed. But <laughs> they're not a softly, softly. Let's talk about this um, group. They are um, fill the end of my rifle. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's your. I really re- couldn't recommend it enough to anyone. So yeah, that's uh, that's my review over and done with. Excellent. Right then, so uh, so now I've finished my review of the division, and we all get on to the news after the break. So see you in a minute. <laughs> So let's dig into the news. Um, first off, it sounds quite familiar, but The Division. <laughs> um, it's getting free DLC on April the 12th. Uh, this is free DLC. It's not included as the season pass, so everyone can get a crack at this. It's called Incursions, and it does add a few interesting bits to it. First off, there's going to be uh, an end level, so level 30 plus uh event at the end of it so they're looking at this more be squad based and the rewards will be lots of high level gear so we, we like the sound of that now one thing that division hasn't got at the moment but will have with this dlc up for, um, update is the ability to trade loot as it stands now when you pick up something you can't give it to someone else in your team This one, with this update, it sounds like you'll be able to pick up stuff in the Dark Zone and 
you could drop it there to let someone else pick it up. So this could be used in a couple of ways, I've been thinking. You could either use it to help build up your squad, your mates, or could you go up to someone and threaten them for bounty? Could you hold them to ransom? I was thinking more like dropping stuff on the floor as bait and then waiting for someone to run up to it and then just kill oh, it. Oh, you dirty there. bastard. I love that idea. Just leave like two or three people's worth of blue. Just leave a nice gold shiny in the middle of the road and wait for someone to run over it and then bang. Oh, you are so <laughs> evil. I love it. But that's, see, that, that's a simple thing like that adds three or four different ways the game can change. You could be nice to your teammates. You could be nice to random people. You could be hold them to ransom or you could leave traps and bait. I mean, that, that's evil. I love it. <laughs> um, so, I mean, there'll be a few other features added in it as well, but uh, there's going to be some stability issues as well that are added to it. So, it's it's free DLC. Can't argue with that. It's adding extra gameplay. Um, it does sound like it's going to be for more people that have hit level 30, which isn't that hard to do at all. I mean, you'll gameplay-wise get through it. You'll be 30 before you know it. Well worth taking a look at. I can guarantee I'll be on there on the twelfth, twelfth of June, July, probably still. Up, <laughs> up until I think I'll probably not be on this till No Man's Sky comes out. To be fair, and then we'll see how it goes. But yeah, incursions twelfth of April, pretty much probably the day this podcast comes out. So that'd be good for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so there you go. Moving on, uh, going to Connor and Gaz's game, Hitman. There seems to be a bit of an issue with it. Yeah, uh, I'd heard about this as well. A save game issue. Now, as a lot of games seem to be nowadays, including things like Division, it seems to want to be played online all the time, which isn't always possible because, as Connor can quite happily attest to many times, Wi-Fi doesn't usually stay solid all the time. It can drop. Um, it's it's not just my happen. Wi-Fi that's the problem, it's the actual wired connection that's the problem. Yeah, let's say the internet connection isn't guaranteed to be on online all the time. Now, if you are online and for some reason it drops and you save the game while being offline, that save will not work with you being online again. Which means you could That's lose really a lot stupid. of gameplay. You could lose a lot of what you've been up to. It's... I could understand if stuff that was happening in the game is dependent upon you being online, but given, as far as I'm aware at the moment, it's not... It seems really, really silly that the the saves are handling differently. It must be done to prevent people from being able to cheat the system, basically. Yeah. Uh, but, um, but the worst bit is, as it stands now, the developers, IO Interactive, have no plans of changing this. There's no way, if so, if your internet connection drops and you've made a save, that's it. If you want to carry on that line, that story, you've got to stay offline. Now, being with a game that's episodic, I think that could be an issue. Because it, say you drop during episode two of whatever it's five, six, or whatever they're going to go on to, that's it. You've got to go back to the start or go back to the previous save, at least. Yeah, I'm not happy with that. It, it they does, need to sort that out. It seems like a very basic bug that you would have thought they'd have dealt with early on. I mean, this online, offline saving... that. We're in a we're in a day, a day and age now where, all right, you expect everyone to be online, but that you can't guarantee your internet connection not permanently. I, I'm, I'm I'm surprised at that for the, for nowadays. But yeah, so um, you have to be careful when you're playing your your hitman. Yeah. I will. I will feedback probably in future podcasts about my experiences Ooh, with you, that. You'll be interested because, as I say, you have um, um, a poor internet connection to internet, say. I was going to say yes. Yeah. It, 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 that's what it feels like. <laughs> yeah, it so does. If it's going it to it's, it's dependent on the weather. <laughs> <laughs> if it's going to happen, it'll happen to you, mate. So we'll, oh yeah, we'll definitely. Find out. Yeah, there, there may well be a lot of raging in a few of my future podcasts. <laughs> Okay, and on from that news to some rather sad news, even by my standards. Um, Sony have closed Evolution Studios, the developers of my much-loved racing game, Drive Club. Much talked about, much, <laughs> yes, much talked hated about. and 
loved in probably equal measure. Well, that's it. it I mean, I, I, I'm not going to go fully into it as always, but people well know what my thoughts on Drive Club were at the start. And it's been a long, long road before I got to the point where I could say I was happy and it was a good game. To the point where was it last episode or the one before I even said it was the best driving game on the PS4? <laughs> that, that, that's a hell of a from a bottom to the top. Now, as much as it, the game it comes from the the guy who loves really bad driving games, exactly. that's maybe not a ringing endorsement and could be the reason for what followed. No, I mean I, 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 got <laughs> I think they didn't help themselves by bringing it out bad to start off with, but they have worked non-stop to make it better. They've added a lot and. Apart from something like, say, the Battlefield series, I haven't seen many games be supported DLC-wise as well as yeah, Drive that campaign. DLC yeah. is ridiculous. I, mean, I, 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 I think I paid agree. a tenner for it. And like, I've got over 100 add-ons or some crap like that on mine at the moment. It, it's, yeah. there's, there's insane amounts on there. It's got like 130-something trophies, that game. Now. And the rest yeah, I nearly it. picked up the PS Plus update with the, um, season pass. With the season pass because it was like eight quid, and yes. I really wish I had now. I mean, I think it, the season pass is on at the moment for like a fiver, isn't it? Yeah, it's on. I uh, think they you need full it's game just changed, doesn't it? Oh, I don't know. I'll check it. I think I'll it's have on to have a sale store at the moment for five pound. Ooh, I might have to have a look. Well, I've, for, got, for a I've got my PS4 on, so I will check now. Where you guys are. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they also Evolution also did um, WRC Rally and Motorstorm. I loved Motorstorm. I a lot of people didn't like it. I I really really enjoyed. Well, I liked the first one. I really enjoyed Pacific Rift, um, and Apocalypse is fantastic. It's one mm. of the few 3D games that Sony made that works really, really well. I wasn't a... If you've got a 3D TV, it's well worth playing. I it's fantastic. I, I wasn't a huge fan of the Motorstorm series, but I mean, it, it technically wasn't quite my racing style. But it, it was, yeah, it, yeah, it was a good, pretty solid game. Unfortunately, Sony closed Evolution Studios on March 21st. Sony's statement says, where possible, we will try to relocate people onto other projects. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's a nice statement to say. Hopefully they will. But there may be light at the end of the tunnel. Because it seems that when this news broke, the senior community managers um, were tweeting about the possibility of, or looking forward to trying to stay together. Now, it is conjecture, but this could mean they may be looking to set up their own separate indie studio. They could be looking to maybe go to a whole new developer and work as a separate team. It's all up in the air at the moment. There is no solid evidence for any of this apart from what they've said on social media. Well, there's, it is confirmed that Drive Club, Club isn't going to die. It will continue. Sony still own it and they will continue to support it. And from what I'm aware, they've been showing off um, VR demos of it. Yeah. So I mean, there is a VR version of it knocking around, which would tie in perfectly to the billions of hours they spent decorating the interiors of the car yeah. and stuff. I and I can see that be. being being something that would work really well within VR. A first-person racing game Ooh. in VR. Get yourself a nice steering wheel. That game could be amazing. I mean, they've jumped. The it already is they? good, but can you imagine a VR version of that? If they just basically yeah. said, "Right, day one, here's a VR patch for it. You've got VR, bump oh, I'll, I'll straight in money. and play it." They, they've jumped the gun because this should that should have been VR should be Gran Turismo's party piece, but Gran Turismo doesn't exist on the PS4 yet. No. So Drive Club was the, the logical choice, and they had to be saying there, there, there must have been reasons why it came out crap in the first place. Cause I'm, I'm, ex- I'm expecting it was overpromised. Um, I think maybe they overreached. I don't think they were able to do it. Well, I think Sony must have thrown a lot of money to get that game working. Going to be delayed. A I year. bet there were a lot. Of, yeah, I bet there were a lot of other studios involved helping to kind of make sure that worked. It, I think it became a passion project for a lot of evolution. I think they really wanted that oh, game yeah. to be good, and it did sell well. And um, I think it's it's a shame that evolution have closed, given 
through another British developer that have got a, a good heritage. Well, it's, it's a shame that because are gone. a lot of them were from um, Sony Liverpool, who did the Wipeout yeah. series. So you had a really good game in Wipeout, got closed. Evolution are formed, bring out Drive Club, yet yeah, it was a troubled launch. It took a lot of time, but the end result was good, and they get closed. Now, you just thought, I, I don't know, I, I wanted to see more from them. I think the Drive Club likes was good. It wasn't my personal favourite, but it seemed to do exactly, it was Drive Club bikes. It was great in that way. And you say VR is a guarantee they were working on that. That's a done and dusted piece of kit. I feel like, did they wait till that was finished and then close them? I can't see any more DLC coming out, really. No. The, 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 but the, so, it's the last one called like Checkered Flag or something like that. What's the last piece of DLC that was released like the oh, day before? God. The, um, I have no idea. There's been that much DLC, I couldn't... It's something, it's something like the finish line or the... It it basically is reference to the fact that they're, they're finished, that they're over, they're done. I mean, it, which is it, it's very sad. It's always sad to see. They it. obviously knew a while ago that it was coming, and mm. we're all told, right? This we're giving you enough forewarning. We're finishing this off, and then I'm sorry, we're we're shuttering. I mean, it it, it just sucks. It, any developer uh, falling falling down is just it sucks. Um, I think there was far more to come from them. As I said. The way they were supporting the game, I mean, they admitted their faults. They worked their asses off to get them get it working, and they did. It came up from a terrible game or a terrible launch, shall we say? It wasn't it? Was never a terrible game. It had major issues, and they brought it up to the point where it's a solid racer. It's there's always an online community for it now. Um, the photo mode looks really good. There's a good range of cars. Wasn't enough American cars for me, but what was there really, really looks good. I mean, my two-year-old son loves driving. It it will get on there, and he always picks for some of the, the uh, McLaren F1 and loves doing <laughs> burnouts. He loves smoking the tires off it, <laughs> but but he, he understands how to do it. That's the worst bit. He's God forbid he's going to be better than me soon. <laughs> <laughs> it it just, won't be long. No, it won't be. You've seen me drive. I mean, Christ, anyone that's seen the. Um, the Gran Turismo videos from the Gamer Nights will know that. <laughs> Christ almighty. Um, but yeah, so I'm really sad that Evolution Series is closing. Really hope that everyone there finds a really nice place to settle down and bring us great games. Great games day one would be nice, eh? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but I, come on. I mean, you, everyone knows what it's, I'm It's so. fair comment. Uh, on to kind of happier news within the gaming industry. Mm. It was the BAFTAs on the 7th of April. Woo-hoo. And what a fantastic show it was. It wasn't Rufus Hound hosting this year. It was back to the regular host of Dara Breen. Yay. And Good. he was fantastic. He was very, very funny. His little like opening monologue was um, a good gag to do with horses and people with scarred faces. And he he told some very, very clever, very video game related jokes to an audience of people that would Understand. probably only get them if they were into video games. Certainly different to his more mainstream stand up stuff. Um he does occasionally stick in games jokes in his normal stand up stuff, but obviously he's he's playing to a crowd. Being a, a big and avid video game fan himself, uh, it it's good seeing someone who loves video games, presenting the awards. Uh, for those that don't know, the BAFTA is the British Academy Award, uh, British Academy Film and TV Awards. Um, so they're, they're hosted every year. They're a spin-off from the, the normal BAFTAs for, for movies and telly. Mm. And they're purely for games. And this is the fourth year I think I've, I've been able to watch it. It's the second year I've been able to watch it live because it's been streamed for the last two years on Twitch. You should be able to catch a replay of it. Um, I think if you go to at BAFTA Games, I think there's a link to, to the, uh, Twitch stream in there that's well worth watching. Yeah, I missed but if you, <laughs> if you don't want any of them spoiled, then, then don't listen to this next bit. But I'm going to give a rundown of, of what won what. I'll start with the things that that kind of naturally. I'll just go through them in the order in which I'll the presenters probably easier. 
Um, I'm not going to list everything that was nominated because that's just going to take too long. <laughs> so, artistic achievement was um, Ori and the Blind Forest by Moon Studios, published by Microsoft. So, we're probably not going to see that on PlayStation, sadly, but that's supposed to be a pretty good game. It did look very, piece, very yeah. nice. It definitely had a lot of lot of plaudits when it was released on Xbox. Audio achievement. Everyone's gone to, everybody's gone to the rapture, not everyone. <laughs> everybody's gone to the rapture, developed by a Chinese room and published by Sony Computer Entertainment Europe. Uh, best game. This was the controversial one. In the best game category, there was everybody's gone to the rapture, life is strange, Metal Gear Solid 5, Rocket League, Witcher 3, The Wild Hunt. Mm. And the winner was actually Fallout 4. Um, yeah, okay. That's... That was that was a bit of a surprise. I wouldn't have chosen that, I must admit. British game. Again, I think this was a bit controversial. Um, and Derebrin made a bit of a, a joke about it. But in British game, you had Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, Hair Story, Prison Architect, which really surprised me being in there, Tear Away Unfolded, which mm-hmm. is a lovely game, and Until Dawn. And it was actually won by Batman Arkham Knight. Oh, really? Which, yeah, which th- that surprised me. Debut game, a lot of ones I'd never heard of, but Hair Story by Sam Barlow won. Uh, Hair Story did very, very well. Spoilers, that it won a few awards. The Family Game, which had some interesting titles in it. Destiny, uh, Disney Infinity 3.0. FIFA 16, Guitar Hero Live, Lego Dimensions was the one I thought was going to win, mm. Super Mario Maker, it was won by Rocket League. <laughs> so, Psionics <laughs> game, I can, I can well deserved. Well deserved. I love Rocket Really League, good. Yeah. Out of that selection, Super Mario Maker is one of the most genius things I've ever played in my entire life. It is, but it, it has, you've got to spend a lot of time to figure out what you're doing, whereas Rocket League, you can literally turn on and any age can just jump in and play, can't they? Yeah. Mario Maker and I think is that's... easier than Minecraft. A lot easier. Yeah, I, I, that was a tough category. I, I was kind of surprised to see FIFA and Guitar Hero in that category because mm. I thought we were going to see more Toys to Life stuff. But yeah, that was that was interesting. Well, I'm happy, and I'm happy not... with Rocket League for that. I, 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 I'm, I'm happy with it, but I think Mario Maker is better. Oh, I, 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 I do. I mean, if I was going to buy a Nintendo... Uh, for any game, it'd be Mario Maker. But I th- it was I think... not the last, the last award for Rocket League. Good game design. This one will really please uh, Gaz. It was Bloodborne by so uh, From Software, cool. so, and published by Sony. It does so look good, I must admit. The it way does, it all it... fits together, though, like the level design and how intricate yeah. it all is, it's, it's so. It's not still not as good as the original Dark Souls, but it's very good. I'm happy that one. Yeah, I, I think it from. From everything you've said about it, what other people have said about it, I can completely understand why that took that award. Game Innovation. Um, this was another award for Hair Story uh, by Sam Barlow, which I've never played, and I really do want to now. It, for those that don't know, it's kind of a... You're interviewing a female suspect, I believe, in a murder. And it's done like police interview tapes, and you're kind of going through trying to find clues. Oh, I've, yeah, I've seen a lot. I think of that, it's yeah. like two quid on smartphones, like on yeah. the App Store or on the Google Play Store, so it's well, not too expensive. That ties perfectly into mobile and handheld, because it won well, that one as well. Oh, did it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's that a segues go. We couldn't have planned that. <laughs> that was that was fabulous. Multiplayer. This was quite a tough crowd. Mm. Um, Someone's in there that I was surprised to see there. So, multiplayer, you had Destiny Taken King, mm. Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time, Splatoon, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, and World of Warships? Huh? I would have gone but Splatoon. It was won by Rocket League. Yes, well, I, so I can't another argue Another one for Rocket League. Definitely Rocket League is better than Splatoon. Definitely. Yeah, fair enough. I, I, I love Splatoon, I, but. Rocket League when, is just. When I looked so at the funny. list of that, I went, yeah, Rocket League's got to win that. Uh, music. So that was Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. And from what I believe, it's Jessica Curry that, that did the music. And from what I had within the show, I've still not played Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. I have heard lots of good things about it. And the, the music is supposed to be 
superb. Uh, original property. This was won mm. by the game. I really wanted to win this award. I wasn't bothered about whatever else it was nominated in, but it was won by Until Dawn by Supermassive Games. Well deserved. Original oh, property. Okay. I want yeah. more Until Dawn. I I think that's fantastic. Well well deserved. I think I talked about it at length on on a previous podcast. Yeah. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Uh, performer. So this is generally vocal or motion capture performer. And this was another one for everybody's gone to the rapture. And it was Marlena D- Dandridge um, as Kate Collins. So there was two people from everybody's gone to the rapture were nominated, but she won. Cool. Persistent game. Right. This, this doesn't, none of the games in this seem to fall properly within the idea of persistent game in my own, own thinking. But it was actually won by Prison Architect, which is by Introversion Software. Um, and there, they, it's out, I think, in early access on Xbox. It's out, I think, on PC. It'll be out it's, on PS4. it's been in early access on PC for about three years. Yeah, because what is it, <laughs> what, version 13.6 or something? Every time the last EGX three GXs like, I've, yeah, the last three I've been to, EGX, it's been there. So it's been in EGX since 2013. Wow, but, but it's an interesting. I, I kind of like the idea of the game as well. So I mean, I know it's taken a while, and they've shown it a lot, but that doesn't, you know, fair enough. That's yeah. I still don't see how a tycoon game's taken three and a half years and it's still not out yet. <laughs> I, d- I don't know if they're taking the Mickey though with it being a persistent game. I said it persists at being all these different events mm-hmm. and persists at not being out yet. But I know Double Eleven are doing the uh, conversions for yeah. PS4, so. I'm hoping to to play that at some point. I know you're interested as well, aren't you? Yeah, aren't you, Graham? I've already taken that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's fair that comment. One. And I'm definitely interested in that. I do love a bit of Oz. So I quite fancy creating my own Emerald City. Which, which bit um, of Oz do you like? Because there's certain parts I don't want to go in. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that show. There's no way there's parts that I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Moving straight <laughs> uh, away from all of that uh, into sport and. Tough category, this. Last year, it was won by Oli Oli, which shocked everybody. This year... Rocket League. A deserved winner, Rocket League. Yeah. yeah. Well what deserved. I find hilarious <laughs> is Rocket League. As great as it is, it's not really... Oh, see, to me, that should be like a proper sport, like a sports game sort of thing. Yeah, well, I this mean, is, I this is the thing is, is, if you look at the list, Dirt Rally, FIFA 16, Forza Motorsport, Football Manager, PES 16. <laughs> it's football games and driving games. And they went, you know what? We've got a lot of games that are football games and driving games. Why don't we just give it to the game that is a football Both. game and a driving game? <laughs> you, you've got to look at uh, uh, Rocket League. And although it's a simple premise, and in theory there's not that much there, apart from, I mean, apart from just the, the players having a laugh, everything works really well. The physics in it, a flawless. Yeah. Oh no, I love it, but I just don't, it, I don't think it's a sports game. I, I mean, it's football with cars. I mean, it is football. I mean, and they've added the hockey puck, and you can turn it into a square block, which makes it a bit rent. But every bit of it is so solid. I mean, there's I've never seen an issue with it at all. So I mean, any category it's in, it's it's going to be a hard one to beat. The servers do go down quite a lot. I play it all the time. <laughs> I play it a bit. I must. Be, I've, I've never seen. A, I think I've had a couple of times. I've had. I've had waited a little bit to get into a game, but very, very rarely. Oh, the other day was. It said there was like a hundred thousand players online, but there was only <laughs> two two people in a play in every playlist. So it I think they had a big server issue, didn't they? Because I saw mm. something after you tweeted about that that they they had to do a massive server reset, and then they mm. they managed to bring everything back online. I think that will be the first cross platform game between Xbox and PS4. Yeah, I can cuz it is one that everyone will want. Cuz yeah. it is PS4 and PC and it? it's got cross play yeah. with that. So I can see it being now it is on Xbox finally. I can see that being one of those it will be the game that bridges the gap and ties into something a bit further along. Um that I'll go to in a second. Uh story-wise 
Um, it was won by Life is Strange, which I haven't played by Don't Nod Entertainment, published by Square Enix. Yeah, I haven't played that either. It's it is to supposed to be a like like Telltale game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks very Telltale. It's supposed to be very well done and a, a strong female lead, different kind of story, kind of a coming of age type story. It's supposed to be very, very good. Um, Until Dawn was in that one, and I did want Until Dawn to win, but I can understand why Life is Strange has won. Uh, the One to Watch Award was uh, d- for in association with Dare to Be Digital was Sundown, which looked really nice. They showed little like footage of each of the games, and it looked really good. So it's kind of like a an up and coming um, award. And then the the final award was for esports, which is is obviously quite a big thing. They did did go into quite some length about it. They're obviously trying to push it a bit more in this country because it's not something I've ever really gotten into. So you had like Call of Duty Black Ops 3, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Dirt 2, Hearthstone Heroes of Warcraft, League of Legends, but it was won by Smite. I guarantee That's next surprise. year, if things kick off, pun included... Um, with Rocket League in the way I expect it will, that will be yeah. the esports game next year. That will uh, win next year. Yeah, I must. Say, I'm, I'm not a big, big into the esports, but I can, I could almost see myself sitting there watching some Rocket League, and especially into console. Yeah, player. I can. Yeah, that that will bring some team serious, PlayStation versus team Xbox. Yeah, I will I, happily I can... play Rocket League professionally. <laughs> I'm not good enough, but I will happily get paid to play. <laughs> is that where you're putting your hat in the ring? Then is that that what you're saying? Yeah, this electric, this electrical malarkey is not working. There'll out, be the it? scouts. The scouts will be on spectating your games. Well, I'm, I'm sure EGX this year will have a, a, a tournament. We'll throw Gaz in for that one, shall we? Yeah, I think we should. We'll get do it with representing Joe. We'll you you need three people years. for a rocket team for a rocket league team. So. Oh, oh Jesus, God. I better get some practice. <laughs> We're screwed. If we try it, we're doing it way before we've had a drink. Yeah, definitely. That won't go well. I only, I only play well when I'm drunk. Isn't it? We'll do the frigging <laughs> three stooges. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Larry Kelly and Murr. Who's who? Oh, God, no. We're all bad. <laughs> oh, dear. Go on, moving on. Anyone else? Um, that was that was it for the BAFTAs. The, there was an award, a fellowship given to the guy that created... Doom and uh, Wolfenstein 3D, John Carmack um, who is now working within VR stuff very very talented engineer, um, very kind of understated, he gave a really really nice acceptance speech it was it was good, I can see why he's won it I didn't know a lot about him he's obviously someone who works very very hard and created something that no one else did he, he basically in the first person shooter genre it, he is the person you need to thank for, for Call of Duty and all Counter Strike and Quake and Doom he is the person you need to thank for it because it, if it wasn't for him you wouldn't have had the the first person games we've got so it was a well deserved award um, moving on from the BAFTAs and kind of tying into the BAFTAs Roll 7 the lovely people that make Not a Hero and more importantly also make Ollie Ollie. Yeah. They're releasing in an Ultimate Combo Edition for PS4 uh, via Badland Games and it's got both the games together on a physical disc with a load of making ofs and extras. So that's I'm gonna guess. Nice. it's coming later in the year. Um I will I will have to dig out the dicks. I don't think it actually specifies, I think it's summer. Uh, but that's nice. That's nice to see that they're they're getting a small indie game that has been out on Plus. Both have been on Plus at some point. Uh, a physical release, and I think I'll probably pick this up as well because I really like Roll Seven, and I really really liked Holly Holly. So nice to see that it's getting a physical release. I kind of hope they do a physical Vita release because I think they should. Mm, I think I think the, the Vita does need more physical releases because I think it will stop people with this. Illusion that there's well, no games. Well, talking talking of physical releases, you've just reminded me, and I added it to the agenda, but limited run games, 
are producing two or doing physical releases of two really good games. So Oddworld New and Tasty, the PS4 and the Vita versions are both getting limited run. I think 5,000 copies um, of each are being released. And they're also doing volume as well on PS4 and Vita limited run releases. I think probably about 5,000 of that as well. They're due, I think the pre-orders for New and Tasty are up now. Um, you can only order one of each per customer, so there's not going to be any going on and ordering. Uh, I think it's thirty dollars, might be less than that. Um, you'd have to check, but go and have a look at limitedrun.com um, and check out what's what's on there. I'd and be tempted to pick those up just because you know, they are limited. Well, runs. They, they 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 are games that you're if if you manage to snag one. In a few years, they will be worth money. They will be worth a lot of money because you won't be able to get them again when they're gone. They are gone. They've they've released a few others. Uh, Saturday night, uh, Saturday morning RPG. I um, think they did uh, Retro City Rampage DX on Vita. They did the cart like a physical yes of that, and I think that goes for like over a hundred quid on eBay. Yeah. So they're they're definitely worth bearing in mind. If you're a collector, you're probably all over it, and you're thinking, "I'm going to have them." Um, but I think that's really nice that, that good games that, that deserve to be given a physical release are getting a release. It's just a shame they're being released in such a small number, but fair play. It's ones you're not likely to see popping up in your local Kex or um, gamers trading. Yeah. Rocket people League's will hold on to them. As well. Sorry, Rocket what was League that? that? Rocket League's getting one, I think, as well. It is, yeah, one. yeah. I'll pick up Rocket League, yeah. And I think yeah. it's expensive at 30 quid. Which is quite, but I think it includes everything. Yeah. All future DLC, you don't have to ever pay for it. You get like because they've been. I think they did it with um, Minecraft Story Mode. Yeah. So they as did. long as you've got the disc, that is your season pass. Yes. So it, it registers. You've got the disc, and then you'll be able to download all the DLC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't. Which is quite a cool idea. I, I like the fact we're going back to to physical. That it's becoming a bit kind of the way that vinyl is. Is that as much as you can have any music you want, you can just buy it and it's installed on your device. There is something about having a physical item. As much as it takes up space, that, that tactile feel of actually having an item to hold and and have there is is really nice. And I, I, There's certainly more games I'd like to see coming out. I'm sure there probably will be over, over the coming months, but, but they're definitely the ones that are, are confirmed for physical releases. Nice. Mm. So they're only on the website. They're only showing um, Oddworld and Tasty at the moment. Yeah, volume volume is due. Um, so if you're curious about volume, check out the last podcast because I reviewed it and I really like it. Yeah, <laughs> I really, so they're doing really a like limited it. run of New and Tasty on the PS4 and the Vita at thirty dollars each. Yes, and it's on the they go live on April the twenty fifth. Right. So you can't put it in yet, but I, th- I think I might be jumping for that. Remember, you can only order one of each as well. So. Yeah, I think that's yeah. Really... Which I think that's great. I think that's really good. That stops scalpers. Obviously, there's nothing to stop getting all your family members to all put an order in for them if you really want to scalp. But I think that's really sad. I think you should get it to collect it or because you want to play the game. Yeah. I, I I think that's probably that's where I'd want to be on it. I'd yeah, I think I want the, the PS4 version for me would be the one I'd I'd chase for. But yeah, New and Tasty was fantastic. I loved it, and there is rumours that the second one is in development at the moment. Cool. Okie dokie. Right, uh, moving especially on with uh, talking about games and releases, we'll just do a, a quick mention. Uh, Going gold is Uncharted 4 and the Ratchet and Clank reboot. Yeah, they so we'd kind of conjectured about Uncharted and why it was delayed again in the last podcast, but they've been tweeting pictures of having the the final pressing of the 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 first master kind of copy, the final test pressing. So it the game's made, it's done, it's come in, and the the box out pictures have been shown off for Ratchet and Clank so, so they will be here I think Ratchet and Clank's due end of this month about 21st or something and then um, Uncharted's beginning of next month so oh, 
I'm excited for Uncharted 4. I am really, really <laughs> excited for Uncharted yeah, 4. Would, wouldn't have guessed. <laughs> <I'm> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, but not a huge fan, are you? We were talking about that yesterday. You Love The made, Last of Us. Don't really, not bothered about Uncharted. You must have made poor Justin fall out of his chair yet last night. <laughs> poor bloke. <laughs> Um, right, moving on to some fresh news. Uh, as of yesterday, the PS4 had its 3.5 firmware update, which added a few interesting things to it. Um, in the update was the ability to remote play to your PC or your Mac, which unfortunately I haven't managed to try out yet because I didn't have my laptop up and running until today. So <laughs> I will, um, I'll be having a crack at that as soon as... That's an interesting idea. Well, I think I'd use it far more than I'd be doing remote play to the Vita, I must admit. I think with a bigger option screen, um, and yeah, I could. it's a good way of sneaking it into work as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as long as the lag isn't any kind of issue, I can see, see me using that quite a bit. Um, on top of that, it also gave the ability for um, users to go offline while playing games so yep. we all know how annoying it is when you're trying to watch something on Netflix or so, and all of a sudden 20 of your friends pop up online or they're inviting you to party chats and you don't want to and it just gets all the way annoying so now you can basically hide but like, like you could do on the PS3 you can play while not being not showing online which is always handy uh, on top of that uh, you can add uh, team PSN accounts now which bridges the gap between a, a sub account and an adult account, which basically means the teen user can play offline for as long as they want, but the parents have to authorise online play. I didn't know that had been added. That's yes, quite cool. It was a bit of a sneak. I didn't, didn't mention it till uh, to actually release, which I quite like that idea because it gives it, it lets go of the reins slightly, but you still got you can keep an eye on what your teen's doing. But most teens have already added an adult pass anyway. There's always ways around it. But yeah, I don't know. But, um, some careful parents might find that of some use. What happened uh, to the days of getting your mum to go into HMV and buy you GTA 3? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. They don't I wouldn't know as an adult when it came out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were actually like, had this <laughs> Pain in the ass. Uh, <laughs> feel old now. Um, they've also added the amazing ability to tag your friends on Facebook and Twitter for photos and videos. Yippee, Kaye. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can. Uh, it's yeah. Okay, some people are going to use it. It's a nice little add-on. It's really nothing. odd because I thought they were removing the ability to send videos and photos to Facebook. Obviously not. They've no, obviously decided not. to not remove it. Um, the, the, whilst you're mentioning that, there's there's also something else that I'd noticed. Share Factory, there's some patches for that. So if you record video, you can now choose to include your mic audio um, as you're playing. That's so been you there can for do. A while, I think. No, 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 not not to record it whilst you're playing. It hasn't. Oh, so if you ca- if you capture video, you would then have to go back and redub audio back on. Whereas now ah, right, you can okay. choose to have your mic turned on, so you can. It's they had the option to do it within a party, so that people well, within that's... a party, if you were streaming, it would stream all of the party party's audio or record all of the party's audio. Whereas now you can choose to select so... to record audio at the same time you're capturing. So you could be capturing a certain moment of a video and going, mm. right, you need to look behind you, look over there. What's that over so, there? So basically what you're saying is now all of my dis- my division videos have to have explicit rating and stuff on the front. Uh, if you've got it enabled, yes. Yeah, I'd maybe turn it off. That's, that's quite <laughs> quite, quite colourful um, language involved in that. Yeah, maybe turn it <laughs> yeah. off. I mean, uh, also, but yeah, that's that's a really nice option. That uh, save a lot well, of time be, for me at times. Yeah, if you want, I'll be playing around with a bit. Uh, they've also added the ability for chat parties to, or party chats to um, have a user define how many people uh, join in. We've all had those days where you've had three or four of your friends in and then randoms pop in and out that just yeah. move your head in. Well, now you can have a user defined limit between two and eight. So that will stop that problem happening. And it ties in with the addition of the events calendar, doesn't it? Because well, the you yes. can you can now set up events and you can coordinate to tell 
people which event it is. So say you all want to play the division, you can invite X amount of people into your division party on a set time, at a yeah, set date. I was hoping this would be better than it actually in. is. I, oh, have you tested this then? I tested it day we one. We did it last night, didn't we? Yeah, man, we were already on this shit, man. Oh, you know, we're on, wow. on this podcast, we're, we're up to date when we can be. Um, <laughs> yeah, I tried it. It's it's okay. You can make You can create an event and you can do it for a specific game, specific time, length of time, and all that. That's great. The trouble is, it's a closed event. So okay. only the people you invite can join. I was hoping I could make an event. But you can make an open event onto... Because you can send your events to communities, so you should be able to send it to the Joe Pan and Me community, shouldn't you? I uh, will possibly. I know you can't leave it just to the general public. I was hoping to. And like with division you can only have eight people in it so it was a bit it wasn't right. quite what i was looking for um i don't think you can do custom artwork so it's not quite you know like the big events like you see the um two, double xp for drive club coming up or i think dreams was doing one uh, yeah. the last couple of days it's not quite at that level so you can't i can't do like a, a huge event and hopefully a thousand people join or two people yeah, yeah. Join. It, it's quite a it's not but I think it's, I was hoping for yet. It's because it's more set as a party, though, isn't it? You should yeah. be able to do just an event that isn't as a party. It's, it's For me, I think it's more of an extension of the party chat system than the event system. Right, okay. It's more of a way of just... You know, Synchronising you know, a party. Let, yeah, let your friends know at 10 o'clock, let's, let's jump on here and play that. Yeah. It, it's good. It's a nice add-on. For me, it's not quite as much as I was hoping for. But it, that might happen in the future. Yeah. Maybe they're worried about too many people spamming the living crap out of the the events calendar. Yeah, yeah, possibly. So they might, you know, it might out roll out a bit better in the future. But it's a handy feature. I can see it getting quite a lot of use. But I'd like to have seen a bit more out of it. They updated the phone app as well, didn't they, to incorporate the ability to to create them on your phone? Yes, yeah. The the, app, the apps pretty much you can do. I think that's how I did it. Actually, I started on phone, so. Um, they've also added now I've, it's not been tested because I haven't managed to get hold of one but apparently people using uh, four terabyte drives it's a lot more stable yeah that was a big problem with the because you can get the data bank out oh, yeah not and, the NICO ones yeah yeah which, and it it was a nice idea but they only recommended using a two terabyte drive it said well yeah. you might as well just get a two terabyte drive and put it in your machine I know it can use three and a half inch rather than two and a half inch but mm. it well you could use up to six and a half terabyte couldn't you in the, in the yeah. micro but it was a bit hit and miss um, yeah yeah. Well, I was, I was tempted to get hold of one at one point but I've, I held off but I don't know I mean I'd love to I'd love to get hold of a four terabyte um, two and a half inch drive but I don't think I could mortgage the house for that yet <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be quite pricey, but uh, it this this has been quite a large update. It's given people a fair amount of new bits and pieces. Whether or not we use them all, it's that's hit neither here or there. But I like the fact that we've got a bit of a bigger update here. Where you, the, the remote play, I think, is going to be used a lot. The events I can see being used a fair amount. Um, you send the voice uh, while recording. I, I, yeah, I can see a lot of people using because I mean, people are making YouTube videos left, right, and centre. Even I've started, so um, yeah, looking good. There's still a few things I'd like to see them put in, but yeah, it's not bad at all. But what we'll say now is this is podcast episode eighty-four. We've already got our plan for episode eighty-five. Um, Connor, this is pretty much your specialty. So, do you want to mention what we'll be doing in episode eighty-five? Yeah, um, episode 85, we've got an exclusive interview with the um, owner of Muster Brand, so the company that create gaming apparel and are now moving into films with Star Wars and stuff. Mm. I've reviewed a lot of their stuff yeah. on Joe Pad and Me for this Geek Sishik. Um, so you can go and have a check out of some of the items there and we're going to discuss gaming apparel in general. So we're going to give our opinions on, on what we like, what we go for. Um, and the interview is really good. It's, it's about 80, well, it's not 80 minutes long. It's about 70 minutes long. Um, 
very in depth and will give you a lot of insight into the development process and the future and the st- well the starting of Muster Brand and the future and stuff like that. It's well worth a listen. So. A, a good look into the industry from start from idea to retail, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's, it, I'm hoping people enjoy it. So it mm. it it definitely was my it's my first foray into podcast editing. So <laughs> please be gentle with me, everyone. Uh, but I I learnt a lot doing it. But I, yes. I, I highly recommend that. It's a fun and, game. But yeah, I'm. Um, yeah, so our next episode will be slightly different from the norm. There'll be less gaming talk, or no gaming talk, and more about um, gaming fashion, geek fashion, and with the Mustard Brand interview as well. So take a listen to that when it comes out. I think you'll enjoy. Mm. Uh, right, any last words, any mentions and shout outs and the like? I'd like to do a shout out to a couple of podcasts I've been listening to and enjoying. Um, as per usual, I want to say hi to Colin and Justin over at Last Save Loaded. Uh, always fun listening to their weekly podcasts. And The Same Coin, which I've been listening to for maybe the last couple of months. And it's very rude. It's very, very, very rude. If you think we're rude on here and full of innuendo, <laughs> oh my god, they are very, very <laughs> rude. But quite knowledgeable about games and they talk about films and stuff as well. And it's good. It's a good laugh. It Just be prepared. It's very adult. Um, but yeah, just want to say hi to those. And I'd like to mention, um, we've been friends with this podcast for quite a while and uh, a lot of you might remember a uh, uh, one of them from back in the old sarcastic gamer days, but uh, Marsha, Desiree, and Carrie from the Mummy Gamers, uh, they they've supported us as well um, as long as we've been going, and so vice versa. They're three women who love games, love talking about it as much as they can, go off on some rather random tangents like we do, and it, it's a damn good podcast. It's well worth listening to. You don't have to be a mummy to listen to it. You just, just Take a listen, see what you think. Um, always worth it. Uh, so, yeah, jump in, have a listen. I'm sure you'll be hooked because they are three rather crazy women. Very crazy, shall I say? I listened to the one that Troy was on. That was really good. <laughs> yes, I, I, I must. Admit, I, I do. I do like listening to them. I've, I've been a, a fan from the start. So ever since um, Marsha, otherwise known as Jack's Box Chick jumped over from Sarcastic Gamer and decided to create the Mummy Game and they've been working their backsides off to um, get their name known. Um, they're constantly plugging their Instagram, their YouTube, uh, Marsha's Twitch streaming virtually daily it feels like now and they're, they're going all out to make the Mummy Gamers brand well known so if we can help out in any small way of that we will. Um, on top of that, uh, anyone that is fairly local to me or Blackpool should be aware that Replay Events is holding their annual Play Expo Blackpool at the end of April, from the 30th to the 2nd of May. Um, anyone that's seen the website before will see what kind of things they have going on there. There is a shed load of retro consoles to play, pinball machines, arcade machines, uh, you name it, it's there. If you can think of a game, you'll either be able to play it there or pick it up and buy it there. My wallet is going to take an absolute battering when I go there. I can already feel it. Um, <laughs> there'll also be a load of cosplayers. Uh, we're actually going along with um, Supersonic Sky, who's been shown on our podcast before, on our website before. Um, if I can get mine finished in time, I may even showcase my cosplay there. Ooh. God help me. Um, I'm a little bit concerned at the fact that the Division cosplay is rather weapon heavy and doing that on public transport and making sure they're con safe would be tricky. <laughs> at the moment, don't think they are. <laughs> In actual fact, I would be questioning how legal one of them is, but um, yeah, I'll need to double check on that and see just what I need to do to sort that out. On top of the fact that I need to sort out and figure a way of doing the shoulder-mounted um, division light they have. Because the, the cosplay calls for this little mounted box on your shoulder that has a as the orange glowing light. 
and I've got to try and figure a way of how to put that together without A, costing a fortune, or B, taking forever to do. <laughs> so, if I can't do it for that, I'm, I'll yeah, be ready for EGX, I know that. Because I think you're planning on doing an Assassin's Creed one, aren't you, Connor? Yeah, well, I reviewed the, the Muster Brand Assassin's Creed apparel recently. I've got a making of cosplay written. I've just had to re-edit two of the videos because... The photographer isn't happy with them. So I'm currently working on those and hopefully it might be on the site by the time this podcast airs, depending on how much um, grief I get from the photographer when oh, I send her the, those the new versions of the videos. So, so hopefully they'll be up. But there's lots more photos of, of the cosplay, lots more selfie shots that I took as I developed the cosplay and, and got the ideas together to get it to, to work. So... Um, yeah, it, it was an interesting experience considering it's been nearly a decade since I did my gin one. So <laughs> my gin Kazama. So yeah, it was <laughs> it was a nice experience to kind of try and jump back into that, and it's it's it certainly made me tempted to show it off at an event in the future, maybe. Yes, I must admit, it'd be the first one I've done, so it'd be quite a quite a strange one to jump into. But yeah, so hopefully for Blackpool, but if not for definitely for EGX. Um, and I will be there on the 30th, which is the Saturday. So anyone interested, uh, catch hold of me on Facebook or Twitter. Let us know if you're coming. I'm planning to do a meet-up in Liverpool first, so we can all catch a train together and go off in one big group. Uh, if you're interested, let me know. Um, you can contact me on Twitter at the Jedi Junkie, or one word. Where can they get hold of you, Connor? You can find me at VDJOMB on Twitter and Instagram um, and PSN if you want to. Hit me up, just put a message in there to tell me it's Joe Penn and me podcast listener or something like that, and then I'll just add you to the friends list. Um, just come and say hi. Just come and chat to me about games. Generally, it'll be Assassin's Creed related at the moment, <laughs> but it will change, I do promise. So for all those people who are sick of seeing Assassin's Creed stuff on my feed, I'm sorry I love Assassin's Creed, but no, hey, I will be playing something else soon. Wouldn't they, guess? What about you, guys? Where can they find you, sir? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at DarkChunk1, or take the one off, and that's my PSN. If you want to play Rocket League, or The Division, or Dark Souls. Dark Souls 3 soon. Oh. Yeah, I probably won't talk to anybody for <laughs> until you get stuck and you're wanting people to come and help you. Well, if you want to find me in Division, <laughs> you can. You would have thought you'd be able to find me on the Jedi Junkie, but no, I've got to wait until Sony let me change my PSN account. Uh, you can find me on GCOE20068. Yes, I know it's a pain in the ass PSN name, but my brother in law made it for us a long time ago. I can't find, wait to change it. Go and find the Joe Pan and Me group. Uh, community on um, PSN, and it's easier to find him that way. Yes, would help. <laughs> and we've even got a community for division that I've put together, the um, Dark Zone Defenders, which you can find as a community, or you can find us on Twitter at DZ underscore Defenders, where we're hoping to get as many people as we can. So anyone wants to jump into the Dark Zone, they can find friends and jump on together. So hopefully there won't be so many Mexican standoffs with complete randoms. <laughs> well, you just find me just at the extraction point, know. robbing everyone. Yeah, if, if you find if you find Gaz, make sure your friends on in his party. So at least you get a couple of seconds before he drops you from the party and starts shooting you. So he, <laughs> it would help. He, he's he's a bit vicious with that shotgun. <laughs> um, yeah, but okay. So yeah, we're gonna. I think we've had enough division talk for this episode. <laughs> I could talk for days, but we, we all know that. So um, it's the only reason we're doing different uh, podcasts in between is so that you don't talk about division for the next it, three yeah. podcasts. Uh, yeah, otherwise, yeah, I think we'd, we'd lose viewers for that. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. So, until next time. Are you, oh, oh whoa, 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 before we go anywhere, if you want to follow Joypad and me, you can find us on Twitter at the Joypad and me. You can do the same on Facebook. And YouTube, especially, we're putting up videos as often as we can. Yeah. There, come and see how me getting betrayed on certain games and trying out others. So, yeah, catch us all there. But until next time, that's been me, Graham, otherwise known as Jello Junkie. That's me, Connor at VDJOMB, and me, Gaz at Dark Junk. Excellent. One. <laughs> <laughs> one. Don't forget the one. I'm number one. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh. I wonder how many followers you lose to following that random person that's not used their account in years that has no a kind of right. This is what's annoying me. I'm going to go on a tangent before we sign off. <laughs> Someone has actually now somehow taken that account, and they're oh, like no. they're called like DJ Big Disco Dog or something like that. But they for some reason nicked that handle, and they're like posting it. And I messaged him the other day, but he's ignoring me. Why Why didn't you apply for it earlier? I didn't on know. No one was using it. Oh, you're mad for Some weird French girl had it. And then, like, but she never replied to any of my emails. And then all of a sudden, I looked the other day. You just go gone. straight to Twitter. Oh, dear. Poor oh, well. old guys. <laughs> anyway, that is us for episode 84. We look forward to catching you all on episode 85. So until next time, it's a goodbye from me. It's a catch you later from me. And see you from me. Bye. Bye. Adios.